to walk out with Paul and Jay with Red Hot Stories from Post Game. Interviews, analysis, and the hour. Join the at the Growler. All right, welcome to the latest edition of The Walkout. Paul Daner Jr., Jay Morrison here with you on a day where the Cincinnati Bengals lose 26 to 25 to the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead in absolutely ridiculous fashion. Um, par for the course for yeah. these games, I guess you could say, but doesn't make it any less painful for the Bengals. This is the walkout presented by Cincy Shirts on a day where madness happened. A lot of madness and, and a lot of emotions. And, and Zach Taylor talked about that in his post-game press conference. He mentioned it two or three times. It was an emotional loss. It was an emotional game. Emotions got the best of Jamar Chase in particular. Um, a, a lot happened in this game, as you would expect, in a game that's 26-25. How many lead changes do we have? There are several lead changes. Game decided on a last-second field goal, as we've seen before with these two teams. Fourth and 16. Yeah. You know, they, they get it all the way down to fourth and 16. And that ends up being, get that off the field, a heave, yeah. a, a, just a throw up into space, knock that thing down, and it's over. And think about the way that we're talking about this game. A fumble, a scoop and score fumble from mm -hmm. Joe Burrow. You know, you had a lot of these things. I, I want to get into unpacking some of this stuff here in, in a bit. Okay, Jay, let's start, though, with your main takeaway from this game. I think my main takeaway is, is actually positive. I, I think it was the step forward that, that Joe Burrow and the passing game overall took. Um, Zach Taylor talked about it. That last, last week's passing game was – it just was not indicative. Everybody was worried about, is Burrow okay? They came out and proved that. He, he did it. He made every throw, made every play that, that you want to see. I mean, a fourth and three on the opening drive, convert it. It's a – they end up get going down and scoring a fourth and goal at the three. He buys time, throws a touchdown pass, throws the deep ball to, to Jermaine Burton for 47 yards. Really, look, I thought looked good in the pocket, moved around well. Um, yes, yeah, sacked three times, but that's a, that's the kind of defense that's going to get you a few times. I just I thought it was a big step forward, and I know there's no moral victories, and the and the players to a man said that, but I still think you come away from this game fairly positive knowing what the potential is, knowing that you're not going to be managing Joe Burrow the way – managing that calf injury the way he was last year, this felt closer to normal Joe Burrow, and I think it's just – you're going to see more of it moving forward and, and, and a lot more of it. You know what this is, Jay? A perfect opportunity for me to break out one of my favorite lines from any movie <laughs> of all time that quite often applies to football <laughs> games, especially in September. I, I wish I could just cue up Rosie Perez yeah. from White Men Can't Jump right now. Sometimes when you win, you actually lose. And sometimes when you lose, you actually win. And sometimes when you win or lose, you actually tie. This is the perfect spot for that. I thought on a whole, you got to put the result to the side. And that was hard to do. Like you said, the emotion of that locker room was notable. Yeah. And I, there was a ton of people feeling it because they did. They felt like they let one get away where they were essentially, for the vast majority of time, the better team today. But I think at this point in the season, when you consider where they were at a week ago, when you consider where they want to be, when you consider everything that hovered over Burrow and his wrist, right. and, and, all of, and, it's, and this defense, will they even be serviceable, Right. For them to play the way they did and take it to Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs team for the most part and execute a game plan like that where they were really doing what they wanted to do, that's a win. Like yeah. In the big picture of the season, this is a win today. And if 4th and 16, which is a single percent chance of it getting converted, uh, gets knocked down and Dejon Anthony doesn't make that play, more on that in a minute, um, you are think about the way we're talking about this. I don't think that result, that specific instance should change the way that we view this game from a Bengals perspective. They are ready 
and prepared and look like a team that can make a run and will belong playing at the end of January. That's a pretty big win when you consider all the uncertainty that surrounded them this week. That's my opinion on that. Yeah. Um, by the time they take the field on Monday night football against Washington, it'll be a huge game. It'll be one that they have to have, but I think they go into that with a ton of confidence that they should be able to go dispose of Washington and Carolina on back-to-back weeks. There's a giants game coming like all in the, there's a Raven. They haven't even played a division team yet. They can feel good. We can talk a ton about that. at our next live show yes. is going to be at bet MGM nation kitchen. You know, the place, an incredible venue right down there, right next to where the big street party goes on at the bank, which is going to be absolutely off the charts that day. We'll be in there throwing a party. We'll be taking questions, talking about the game. We'll have special guests. We'll be doing giving away a Jamar Chase jersey, cornhole. coolers, the cornhole game, come win the grand prize, giving away bonus bets, $3 Cincy Lights, $6 Queen City Nachos. We just try to give away a bunch of stuff, <laughs> cheap beer, have some fun, and we're going to be doing that starting at 4 o'clock before the Monday night football game against Washington. We hope to see you guys come down there and join us. It's going to be a blast. You're going to be down there starting to drink anyway. Why not drink for cheap and hang with us? I think that's a pretty easy thing. Also, second chance drawing on Thursday night. You can go down to BetMGM. And if you have a losing ticket, if you had the Bengals as a winner today, you have an actual losing ticket, you can take it in there, put it in for a drawing, and you can win $100 in bonus bets and nation gift cards. 50 or 25 is a second and a third prize. Yeah. All you got to do is put your losers in and you can win. Jay did that. I did. Yeah. There's only two people there last week. So <laughs> if they double it, you still have a three out of four chance of no winning price. this week. So hopefully there will be some more people there. Take your losing tickets down on yeah. Thursday. They draw it at halftime of the Thursday night game. Yeah, absolutely. So make sure you check that out. Also, if you want to get some Cincy shirts, uh, there's tons of stuff up on the site there. Growler Pod is the code, and you can get 10% off all of your purchases on CincyShirts.com, including some Growler merch. Yeah. Maybe you show up at the live show wearing some Growler merch. You can do that. Um, all right, let's go into kind of dissecting some pieces of this game. Let's start at the end. Fourth and 16, you know, Trey Hendrickson is a menace all day. <laughs> he gets a guy benched. He gets a guy holding penalties. He gets two sacks, three, three penalties. All of that leads to him basically killing the second to last drive or one of the second to last drives and then putting them in fourth and 16 at yeah. the end. They go into the deep sticks zone where everyone just playing back at the sticks. And then when the ball comes in, knock it down. Seventh round rookie Dejon Anthony comes into the game, only his third snap of the game. He, you know, he was thought that, that Dejon would play a little bit more. Maybe he could be a Travis Kelsey cover guy in sort of their dime package. We've seen yeah. some of that. They hinted at that. He comes into the game and a ball gets thrown up in his direction. Patrick Mahomes just heaves it. He goes, it was the right call. He went through the guy's back. Mm-hmm. He was there early. He, he didn't go around to knock it down. And he ends up getting flagged and it ends up leading to the Harrison Bucker 51 yard field goal. My immediate question when you saw that happen was, why is Dejon Anthony in the game? Now, they went to three-man rush and drop eight and just have everybody sitting back there. He is a seventh-round rookie. Rookies make mistakes and do dumb things. Where's Jordan Battle? Where's some, some guys with a little bit more experience, a little bit more understanding of what they need to be doing? going into a Josh Newton role underneath something like that, another rookie. But like, again, Hey, you got to trust guys to make plays at a certain point, but it's hard not to look up and say, Dejon Anthony is the one that cost you this game. That's not fair to him. A guy with a bright future who had a nice camp. Yeah. Um, And it's unfortunate. He was busted up after the game, as you might imagine, but the, I put that on why is he in the game? Not the fact that he made the play that turned the game. You said it. It was his third snap of the game. It was technically his fourth snap of the game because a little bit earlier, he had an illegal contact penalty that wiped out a DJ Turner interception. interception. Yep. And so that right there, you know, maybe there should have been some more pause about putting him in in that situation. Um, it, was, it, was, it wasn't an obvious, like, what the hell are you doing kind of penalty, but it was a penalty. He got there early. You've seen Mahomes do this so many times. We're fourth and long, and you think it's over. He just heaves one. He finds something. 
just the play before he did it, he made an incredible throw and it looked like they were down there. And that's Trey Hendrickson drew an illegal, illegal hands to the face penalty. That's what backed them up into the fourth and 16. So yeah, just a brutal, brutal, brutal stretch for Dejon Anthony. Four snaps total, officially two, because two of them were penalties. Those plays don't count. I think you are going to see a lot more of him, but just a tough spot for him to be in and, and hard not to feel for him and hard not to feel the deja vu. He was in the exact same locker that Joseph Osai was in 20 months ago when B.J. Hill was standing next to him, his bodyguard, screening all the questions. Uh, Dejon didn't have a teammate doing that for him this time. It was a, a Bengals media relations person who just said he's not going to take any questions. But to a man, all the other players that we talked to said they, they stood up for him and what – Cam Taylor Brent said shit happens. Yeah. It happened to it happened to Cam today. He gave up a, a touchdown, exact same play later. He makes an interception. We said that's what Dejon has to do. Forget about it. Move on. Next time he sees something like that, make the play. Jermaine Pratt said kind of what we're talking about here. He was out there for a reason. We believe in him and, and we're, we're gonna count on him. And and he didn't have a problem with him being out there in that moment. So it's, it's a tough spot for a rookie to be in, especially one who already had a crucial penalty just a little bit earlier in the game. Yeah, and, you know, Sam Hubbard was talking about, I, I remember losing a game, not recovering a fumble. Uh, my third game of my mm-hmm. Cam Newton fumble, I should have had, and I blew the game. And I, you remember that. Those things do stick with you. But this is, you know, this is a league of adversity, and it's about how you respond to it. And so Dejan will be fine. That's a tough spot for him to be in. And I think there's questions to be asked about – him being out there in a couple of those situations today uh we, like you said mentioning the penalties um joe burrow after the game so you have he calls it the most frustrating loss he thought maybe the most frustrating loss he's had he's like i even need a couple of days to think about why that is you have to ask me again on wednesday but it just is you know he kind of had the long stare into space the mm-hmm. 500 yard space the stare <laughs> of thought kind of going on as he was talking through what was happening at the podium after the game. It, admittedly, he said it was the best he's thrown the ball and felt throwing the ball since the wrist injury. Mm-hmm. I think that was clear. He was yeah. decisive. All the hesitancy questions from last week were eliminated. The deep ball question was largely eliminated. He was zipping it all over the field. He had the deep ball to Burton. That was right on point, a perfect mm-hmm. go ball throw. I mean, he did. All, he looked like Joe Burrow. Yeah, and, and I think that's really what matters most here. And I, and I, he may be frustrated, the fumble, absolutely, the the second down on the previous drive, uh, the drive right before that they had the punt, mm-hmm. um, he misses Yoshivash on a on a wide open slant that would have basically had them forcing more clock to run down to have yeah. have that drive where you take a knee in the victory yeah. at the end which is where they wanted this end and they were tracking that way they were moving the ball mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you get that and then a blitz on third down and you go down for a sack and now you're giving the ball to Patrick Mahomes with all that time the fact that it turned into a fourth and 16 is kind of a testament to the defense and a miracle in its own right because normally Mahomes just eats you alive in those situations they never wanted him to be in that one I think Burrow feels rightfully some responsibility for that. He wasn't perfect, certainly not. But I thought this was a, a – he may be frustrated in, the, in his emotions over this, but largely a really big step and a really big day for Joe. And we saw it, how good Burrow looked. You know who else saw it was the Chiefs. Because it was, it was really surprising that the way they approached that final drive, they wanted no part – giving the ball back to Burrow. They were wasting a lot of time. They got themselves in that bad fourth and 16th position and, and got bailed out by the penalty. But they they were just – there was no urgency at all, and I think that's what it was, is we've got a kicker that can make it from 50-some, and we are not going to give the ball back to Joe Burrow in this situation because he's probably going to be able to do what Patrick Mahomes ended up doing. Yeah. Um, the other part about the offense in Burrow was – this was really the true unveiling of stuff that we have thought we were going to see and talk about Mm -hmm. this entire off season. And that was all these tight ends. Hello, Eric all. Yeah. Welcome. Right. Mike Gesicki. Um, Even drew sample. The first two plays of the game they he used all of them. They all created explosives. They were an answer to the double Jamar, right? right? So Kansas city comes out, they're living the double Jamar life. Well, you get, 15 for 158 to the three tight ends today. 
Kosicki seven for 91, including a 37 yarder on fourth and four early in the game. The first drive that ends up getting you three points, aggressive play calling from Zach Taylor and them. And then another third down on that sec, the one that we talked about with the Yossi Bosch miss yep. a third down conversion. That was huge right before that. When you need it, went to Gasicki. He finds a way to make the play. They were going to them because that was the answer. And then Yossi Bosch, Two touchdowns, only two catches, mm-hmm. two touchdowns, though, including a great ball uh, uh, dragging his feet and extending at the pylon. The other weapons, the Jermaine Burton, hello, welcome. Yeah, yeah. First play, second half. Everybody at halftime, all right, Jermaine, go out there, run straight the first play. We're going to throw it to you, right? <laughs> and he does, and he makes the play, and yeah. that's the stuff you can build on. That helps gain momentum and confidence and a desire to get back in the books for Jermaine Burton and to continue to learn this offense so that you can expand that. That's been the thing is when can they build enough to expand that? You saw all of this stuff. Yeah. And I think that is so huge because that's the direction and the level that you expect that offense to be able to operate at this year. You know what you didn't see? T. Higgins. I know everybody has injuries, but when that guy gets back and it's Chase and Higgins and the tight ends and you can just see where this offense is going. I do. I, th- I thought it was really big. And, and you mentioned all the receiving yards for the tight end. The, the previous record for Burrow was 101 yards by tight ends in one game. <laughs> they smashed that. Mm-hmm. So you see where this is going. I thought Eric all played really well again. Um, and and Gasicki had some big plays, seven for 91. So there, there was a lot to like about this game outside of the final score. Let's talk about the defensive side of this. We, we touched on it a little bit, you know, you mentioned the Cam Taylor Britt uh, touchdown and interception. Mm-hmm. Really interesting from him pointing out. He said, look, I, I played it wrong the first time. I slowed down a little bit. He said, I, I thought the play was over. I mean, we've been running for so long. So I sort of slowed down, not keeping in the back of his mind something that Luana Ramo talked about yeah. earlier this week. Never you really. can't stop. It's why he showed him the 90-yard air yard throw mm-hmm. that they had from a couple of years ago, whatever it was, it, where – you just have to keep going. You have to stay on top. The play is never over. And Mahomes with an absolute dart over the top of him uh, for the touchdown to Rice. Same play, same route. He stays with it. And Mahomes tried to go to it again. And one-handed pick from, from Cam Taylor Britt, the type of play you expect. We talk about breakout year. We talk about rising to a Pro Bowl level. Hello, mm-hmm. everybody in the country watching that one saying, who the hell is that guy? Who's Cam Taylor Britt? the type of play you make if you want to have that breakout season. And I thought that was a big moment from him being the type of guy they need him to be. If you're going to be that number one shutdown, that's what that looks like. It was a huge moment because it was against Xavier Worthy, the, the fastest guy, the 4.21 speedster, who Cam kind of took a shot earlier, earlier in the week. It was also huge. It was two or three snaps after the play I referenced where Dejon Anthony's penalty wiped out the DJ Turner. And you're thinking, mm-hmm. oh, you cannot give Mahomes a second chance like that. And – Cam Taylor Britt got him again a couple plays later. It was a huge moment in that game, and you would expect another stair step moment where you're just going to see that guy keep rising, just like you're going to keep seeing Burrow and this offense evolving. Trey Anderson dominates <laughs> and and really changes the game. I mean, they, it, he was changing what the Chiefs were even considering they could do offensively because yeah. he was just winning around that corner so often. They they have to bench the rookie. They, they're bringing out the other guy. He just can't do. I mean, it was just they. He was getting chipped, and he was still getting around him. An unbelievable day. They they got maybe a, they got a little bit more out of the other guys, but they also got more injuries out of the other guys, which was brutal. I mean, the defensive right. line was an absolute mass unit. They they had to move to Zach Carter and Jay Tufele by the end of it because B.J. Hill has a hamstring and he goes out. Sheldon Rankins had an injury. He was trying to battle through. Uh, they kicked Sam Hubbard inside yep. um, on, in goal line and in passing situations and then had Osai on the outside as there. And I think that was something that they were really forced to do, maybe mm. something that they had ideas of doing as the season goes on, but really forced into that today. Sam moves inside. He said he thought he played a lot better, felt a lot fresher and and after the problems that he kind of had in the opener. I think that was reflective in the way they were chasing Mahomes around a lot today. I, it felt like – I felt – he felt – off balance. It felt like they were doing a good job of keeping him off balance, not knowing 100% what he was seeing or doing. Akeem Davis Gaither's interception was kind of like yeah. that, where you're like, he just seemed like he threw it right to him because he was just kind of not seeing it the right way. Credit to Luana Rumo and that defense, which I think they 
they were really consistently keeping them off balance all day. Yeah, and this is going to be big to watch with with Rankins having the hamstring and, and B.J. Hill. You know, last week he went down, he had the knee injury. This was a hamstring, and he he fired his helmet when he got to the sideline. You could tell that that wasn't good, and these hamstrings just linger. And that you already got Chris Jenkins out with a thumb injury. Hopefully they get him back next week. But, man, that is a – you said a mash unit. That is not a good situation. And yeah, you would like to move Sam Hubbard inside on third down on pass rushing downs. You might have to do it on all three downs. Yeah. So, you know, the North is still kind of a mess. I mean, you had a lot of teams not looking super, uh, you know, the, the Ravens certainly are shocked to see that they're going to get, they got beat by Antonio Pierce and Marvin Gardner mm-hmm. Minshew in their house at home. Um, you know, unbelievable there. So Ravens, and Bengals both 0-2 with losses to the Chiefs thus far. Mm-hmm. Both kind of starting the same way a little bit, but the Bengals, I think, probably feel like they're a little bit more headed in the right direction. Anything else from this game that stood out to you to to, to check in on? I mean, Jamar can't happen. You, yeah. you cannot lose your mind. Like I understand getting mad and, and arguing, and, and referee Alex Kemp gave him a beat. He, he let him have his yep. say. And Jamar just would not stop. And Burrow tried to de-escalate it, and Jamar would not, not stop. And now you're talking about that holdout. I mean, is, is that a product of the frustration of not getting the contract? He's not fully himself and conditioned in week one. Now this, I, I mean, it's just it's a, a really bad look. He didn't want to talk about it at all after the game. He did answer some other questions, very short, quick answers. But anytime anybody asked about the penalty, said he's not talking about it. Um, it's it's the fourth time he's had a 15 yard penalty. The other three were taunting. It's he's going to get fined. It is is not something that you can have happen in a game like this. The the margin of error is razor thin, and to just hand him a first down like that can't happen. Yeah, I mean, he talked about it was the pool report mentioned it was it was abusive language toward mm. towards the official that was part of it. And, and you're right. I mean. The fact that he had time to think about what he was doing and go back and go in again, and that's what ended up mm-hmm. getting him the flag. I mean, that was very meltdown at Paul Brown. Exactly. Reminiscent. That's my first thought when I saw that was like, this is like Tez and Adam Jones at the end of that game who couldn't just couldn't hold themselves back towards the official. And, and I do think that this is a, a pile on of everything. I think it's a frustration of two weeks without really having a bunch of huge plays, double teams all day, the contract, a hip drop tackle, which is what scares you, right? Like it's the reason you want the contract and you want to have, because things like that, that can have devastating injuries are what scare you. He felt like you got hip dropped and that's what made you mad. It's it's fine to be mad. Zach Taylor's like, I don't, I don't want to talk about, I don't, I wasn't there to talk well enough about what exactly went down, but it's okay to be emotional, but You've got, I mean, you just have to be able to contain it in that yeah. you it's, you wonder like what's going on there. You know, he's just, he's, he's not been his normal jovial self because of everything that's gone on. Mm-hmm. And it does feel like it's wearing on him and popped off a little bit. You know, again, we do a lot of referencing history and stuff and you see stuff like that. A guy who's just kind of, wow, you're, you're not expecting that from. And I think back to like AJ green in Jacksonville, like punching Jalen yeah. Ramsey. Like, where does this come Total from here. out of nowhere? We're just, it's a snap and you can't hold it back. It felt like that the way it kept going on and on to eventually draw that flag in a massive spot. Evan McPherson bails his ass out by hitting the 53 mm-hmm. yarder, but it forced him to hit a 50 plus yarder and also took a nice drive off the table i mean they were moving the ball that could have very easily gone in for seven and that's the difference of the game yeah then you're you up still, nine yeah yep you, know, you still get the field goal but you 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 just killed that drive uh with that penalty and it's just absolute inexcusable stuff from anyone much less from your franchise star player and it is i just think it's fair to wonder like what is going on there with jamar chase right now because that is not normal behavior even for him i mean it's wild stuff so yeah perfect glad you brought that up um all right cincy shirts every week we're gonna do we're gonna if there's like a shirt of the game or whatever do so this was a potential for great shirt there was a lot of chances for shirting i'm sure stuff was gonna be said after the game that was gonna be even even better and not like uh well you know this is my most frustrating loss 
Cincy <laughs> shirts people don't go buy my most frustrating loss t-shirt. No. Don't go, don't make it. Don't buy it. We, we don't need that. You can buy the growler t-shirt if you want. There is a whole collection of Bengals gear in there. That is fun. Maybe you're still team Jamar chase. The pay him shirt is still in there with the number one and pay him all kinds of shirts are in there. Make sure you go that and use the code growler pod and you'll get 10% off all of your purchases, Bengals or about streets. Maybe you want my Norwood lateral shirt. That's one of my favorite shirts <laughs> ever. You can go get one of those 10% off. Use growler pod. Uh, the link also over here. You can just hit that and that will take you to the links to all of our stuff, including our Lincoln Cincy shirts. Instead of pay him, how about pay his fine for Jamar? Because it's coming. <laughs> the, 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 the penalty for abusing a ref with verbal language is $32,000. There's no way he's getting away with that. Yeah. Um, all right. That will wrap us up again. We'll, we'll be flying back and we'll have stuff coming, of course, to you all week. Monday night football, Bet MGM, Nation Kitchen and Bar at the Banks. Four o'clock will be our live show down there. Uh, plenty of stuff we're going to give away. Come play the game. Come hang out. Drink cheap. You're going to be going down to the game anyway. Then you can head on down to the street party and have a great time. We look forward to seeing you there, hopefully. All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, watching and listening. And uh, we'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.